Today we're going to talk about finding the slope of a line either on a graph or on a table. So take out your lesson worksheet if you have a copy of that so you can follow along with me as I go through the examples. Here's the problem. We're going to find the slope of the line graphed below. So the slope is the slant or the steepness of a line. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight that, that it's the slant or the steepness of a line. And we always write it as a ratio of rise over run. So it's going to be the change up and down, the vertical change over the change left to right, which is the horizontal change. Another thing about slope is we always write it as m equals, right? So m equals. This is going to be our variable that we're going to use for slope as we move through this unit. All right, so we've got a graph. Here's a line on the graph right here. Now, first of all, if I look at this line, okay, it's a straight line, number one. It's got a constant rate of change. The same thing is happening over and over again from one point to the next. Another thing I notice about this line is this line has a positive slope. So if you were to look at the bottom of your page, these are the different types of slope. You always look at your graph starting from the left side and heading over to the right, just like when you're reading a book. So if I start here on the left side, that means my line would start down here and it's going up from left to right, so that means it's positive. Just picture yourself standing here on the beginning of the line. You'd be climbing up a hill. A negative slope, if I read my graph from left to right, this is the beginning of the line. It's going down, so that's a negative slope. A zero slope doesn't do anything, right? It doesn't go up or down. So if I start on this line and I start walking, I'm just going straight across. I'm not climbing up a hill. I'm not going down a hill. I'm just going perfectly straight across. And a vertical line, we consider that to have an undefined slope. So moving back to our example, this one has a positive slope. So I know that all of the numbers in my slope are going to be positive numbers. Now what I want to do is I want to choose two points. I can choose two points that are close together. I can choose two points that are farther apart. It doesn't matter. I'm always going to get the same slope. So let me start with these two that are farther apart first of all. Even though I wouldn't normally do that, I would normally start with points that are close together. And I'll explain why in a second. So if I'm moving from this point to this point, the first thing I want to do is I want to count the spaces up or down to find the rise. So in other words, how far straight up do I have to go in order to land on this point eventually, right? So I'm gonna to have to go up two spaces. So that's gonna be my rise, is gonna be two. From here, I'm gonna head over to the right, so I'm just gonna move over straight across here until I land on that point. And when I count these spaces, I have one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So six is my run. I'm going to write my slope as a ratio of rise over run. So I'm going to say m equals my rise is 2 and my run is 6. Now when I put that in simplest form, I can divide them each by 2, and that's going to make my slope 1 third. Now if I had decided to use points that were closer together, so say I'm going to use this point and this point, then I would have only had to go up one space and three spaces to the right, right? This would have been a one, this would be a three. Well, my rise is one and my run is three, which would still give me a slope of one third. So you can see that it doesn't matter if I use two points that are farther apart or two points that are closer together, I'm still gonna get the one third. Now, sometimes they're going to give you ordered pairs in a table and they'll ask you to find the slope this way. These three ordered pairs are the three ordered pairs from this graph right here, right? This point is at negative 3, 0. This point is at 0, 1. This point is at positive 3, positive 2. So I just put those in the table for us. And now we're going to look at this table, and I'm going to show you how to find the slope from a table. So the first thing you want to do is find the change in y. So I'm going to look at my y column, and I'm going to see what's happening here. And I'm only going to pick two points. I could easily use the first two, but because there's a negative here in the x column, I usually try to avoid it, right? I usually try to avoid negatives if I can, so I think I'm going to look at the change from here to here instead, because all these numbers are positive. My change from positive 1 to positive 2 is just to add 1, so that's my change in y. Then I'm going to find my change in x, right? So that's over here. From 0 to 3 is plus 3. So my change in y is 1, my change in x is 3. 
my ratio, I'm gonna write the change in Y over the change in X. Now, sometimes you're gonna see a little triangle in each one, and that means the change in Y over the change in X, because I'm not just putting a Y value over an X value. I'm not saying that the slope is two over three. I need to do the change in Y over the change in X. So that's one over three. So we can see that we ended up with a slope of one third, whether we were looking at points on the graph or whether we were looking at the table. The most important thing I can tell you about the table is just remember, keep your Y up high. That's what we tell all of our students, right? Keep your Y up high so that you don't accidentally write three over one for your slope. It's one over three. All right. So at the bottom of your worksheet, you've got a couple problems to try. There's four problems. If you're feeling good about it and you want to stop the video and try the problems yourself right now and then restart it and see how you did, you can certainly do that. Or if you would prefer just to stay with me, I'm going to start going through these examples right now. All right, so we're going to find the slope as a ratio in simplest form. I'm going to pick points that are close together. So I think I'm going to pick these two right here. It doesn't matter. I could pick these two down here and I'll still get the same slope. Or I could pick the two that are far apart from each other and I'll get the same slope. But if you pick points that are close together, then you're not going to have to do as much simplifying at the end. All right, so I want to find the rise over the run. So I'm going to move from this point up to this point. And when I do that, I'm going to have to go up, oh, that was a really bad line. One, two, three, four spaces up, right? So there's my rise. From there, I'm going to head over one to the right. There's my run. So my slope is going to be to go up four and one to the right. And I can simplify that. Four over one equals four. So I would say that my slope is four. If I had gone from this point to this point, I'd be going up eight and over two. And eight over two would still equal four. And this is a positive slope, right, because we're going up from left to right. Okay, next example is a table. Remember, we're going to do the change in y over the change in x. I want to keep my y up high. And again, I'm probably not going to use these numbers down here because there's negatives and I don't like them. I like to just use positive numbers if I can. So I think I'll use these first two ordered pairs right here. My change in y, if I'm moving from 10 to 6, is I am subtracting 4. And then over on this side, if I'm moving from 0 to 2, I'm adding 2. So my change in y over my change in x is going to be a negative 4 over a positive 2. They divide evenly, so I'm going to divide them, and I'm going to say the slope is negative 2. Now, I want to show you something else with this one, because you might say, well, if I go from 6 to negative 2, I'm not subtracting 4, right? I'm subtracting 8 over here if I do that. So let's look at that. And then on this side, I'm not adding 2 like I did up here. This time I'm adding 4. But you'll see that you're still going to get the same slope because if I do negative 8 over positive 4, that's still going to give me negative 2, right? So it doesn't matter. Even if the numbers are a little different in the table, right? The table's not necessarily going to show the same thing over and over and over again. But what it will show is the same slope. It will be the same ratio negative 8 divided by 2, I mean by 4, is negative 2. All right, this next example. This line is going down from left to right, right? If I start over here on this side of my graph, that means my line starts here. I can see it's going down. This one is going to have a negative slope, so I have to be careful that I have a negative in here somewhere. So I'm going to say m equals. I'm going to pick two points that are close together. And this time, to move from this point to this point, I have to go down 3. So we're going to say that is a negative 3 right there for that change, because I am going down 3. And then I'm heading over to the right twice. So down 3 and 2 to the right is going to give me a slope of negative 3 over 2. Now, I don't want to divide this one and make it negative 1.5, because we always want our slopes to be fractions. OK, last one. I'm going to find my change in y over my change in x. I'm not going to use these numbers at the top because I don't like all the negatives. I'm going to use the ones on the bottom. All positive makes me happy. My change in y from 1 to 4 is going to be to add 3. My change in x over here from 9 to 15 is going to be to add 6. I'm going to do my change in y over my change in x. I am going to keep my y up high, 3 over 6, and that reduces to 1 over 2. 
All right, so hopefully you guys did a good job if you stopped the video and tried them yourself. And if you didn't and you just followed along with me, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please ask me in class tomorrow or be sure to ask your teacher. Have a great day.